Checking one, two. Yeah. Pat said we're, we're going to do one song and then Pat said we're... Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing this morning? Everybody doing well? We're going to turn to page 13. We're going to try out a little Do Lord. You told me the name of it was Do Lord and back off. <laughs> Some of you are wondering what happened to the group today, huh? We're a little depleted. Well, there's a little bit of reasoning for this. Um, Jeff shrunk the kids. <laughs> yeah, uh, the group we've been playing for over a year now. Nobody, we're not catching any breaks. And some of these guys are just due for a break. And we've also got something very important that we're wanting to do today. If we can get Pat and, yeah, if you girls want to come on up here. Um, we're going to have some little special stuff going on here for a little bit. And um they're, we're going to let them take over here. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad I'm up a few feet. <laughs> All righty. Mute the, mute the monitors right now. It's a maze up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Okay, good morning, good morning. Um, we want to just take this time to do some appreciation, and I have a little um, thing here that I want to read to you. Um, a home is made complete by God's love flowing through it like an apple pie flowing through the air. It feels comfortable and inviting. Our church has these same comforts of love coming from our kitchen. And ladies from the kitchen. We need all of you ladies, please. Can you come on up here? Come on down, ladies. You know who you are.
I think we're missing some. Where's Rose? Where's she at? Come on up here, gals. Come on up here. She did. Hang tight with us. You thought you were sneaking out, didn't you? Okay, these women are showing their love and faithfulness according to God's word as instructed in 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, as they do each Sunday. And for this, God is saying to them through Matthew 25.21, Well done, good and faithful servants. And to that, the church says, Thank you for showing us your love your kindness, and your love for God's work. You are most appreciated. I don't know about anybody else, maybe women folk, but I love coming here and somebody else has fixed the gravy and the bread, and, and then I don't have to clean it up, and David doesn't have to pay for it, so it's just a good thing. And it tastes much better. Okay, so the church has bought Nadine. You will come and we'll give you some, some flowers. And they're in special little mugs. Thank you. And Judy. And Ann. And I think Stacy is normally here, but she's working today. So we'll make sure Stacy gets those. Carol, do we have Carol? We have Reagan. Marianne Whiteley. Hello. <laughs> Aren't they? And last but not least, we have the church has purchased. Uh, Rose, a Thomas Kincaid, it's Walking in the Garden with Jesus, and that is for Rose. I don't know about you, but I think they deserve a standing ovation. Thank you. Now get back in that kitchen.
keyboard now. Good old Jeff. There you go, sir. You're a good guy. How about that Addo? That's pretty impressive. You bet. That's good. Okay, I thought I was done for the day, so um, give me just one second. There's always one slow one, and guess who it is? Uh-oh. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right, so we don't have any songs arranged, so we're just going to go off what we got here. Page 36, if you all want to turn to, we're going to try just a closer walk with thee.
close to me. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. got a question for y'all. Again, the slow one never prepared. Here I am. The uncloudy day. Could somebody want to tell me what page that's on in your songbook? I don't have, see, I'm, when you've got eyes like me, you have to have bigger print to even see this stuff. So I don't have privilege to that information. Page 61. Thank you very much. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. They tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded day. verse here in just a second. How many of y'all remember Mr. David Dean that was always up here in the Dean family? I was just sitting here thinking while I was doing this song. So we're going to do what David Dean used to do. You remember the Willie Nelson when he did on top of it? <clears throat> Ready, David? <clears throat> oh, they tell me of. Say, play along with me, David. I can't play and do this. i got to pinch my nose. Oh, they tell me of the home that is there. And his smile drives away their sorrows away. Tell me that no tears ever come again In that lovely land of uncloudy day Oh, oh the land of cloudless day David Dean, if you're watching at home, we love you, brother. I just had to throw that in there right quick. Yeah. The things that go on in my mind while I'm up here playing. <laughs> scary, isn't it? Scary, I reckon. It's scary. 
Well, welcome home to Sock River Cowboy Church, to all of you out there and all of you watching on the internet or whatever, too. Glad to have you all. Big hand for the band here, the small band we got today. Yeah. Uh, big hand for those ladies again, too. We appreciate them, man. And thank you, Circle of Sisters, ladies, for doing that, too. That's nice of you. We appreciate it. Yes. All right. You can find dates, times, and places of all our church services and everything else we have going on here at Cowboy Church in our Bunkhouse Gazette newsletter, and there should still be some back on the table back there. Or you go to SockRiverCowboyChurch.com. I've uh, got one special announcement here, actually two. Uh, Wednesday, June 9th, 7 p.m. at our event center right here. Uh, there will be a youth, youth prayer meeting and outdoor drive-in movie night. It's only for the kids, folks. So don't give, this is event is for junior high and high school students only, and you don't qualify. <laughs> All right. Please bring snacks for 20 to share and lawn chairs or blankets to sit on. And also, as a reminder, I don't see them doing it back there right now, but uh, they're starting the church, uh, church camp sign-ups, too, and we should have something back here to get the kids signed up for that. All right. Birthdays. Anybody got a birthday this week? Any birthdays? Any birthdays? No birthdays? Wow. Right here, yeah, she's being bashful, isn't she? Guess what? The one that does that, though, has to come up and sing. Oh. <laughs> Panic went across her face. How about anniversaries? Anything about an anniversary? Right here. Good, good for you. Good for you. All right, you're going to sing adoption Happy Birthday and Happy Anniversary? An adoption day. No, I want you to. I want you to, please. The fear comes over his eyes, and I'm scared to death, too. I got to do this all by myself. I'll let David go. Adoption day. Go ahead. How about adoption day? Got any adoption days? Yeah, right here. Yeah, you bet. Our special little girl there. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. I just have to have another hug for that, too. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy birthday and anniversary. And adoption. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, sir. I was about to forget it. <laughs> and if Catfish was here, you'd have to go, and many more. I, did I ask for visitors a while ago? I did, didn't I? Or not? Did I forget it? We got visitors here. One back here, Sherry. Get your hand up. <laughs> All right, here's a visitor. Anybody else? Right here. All right. Glad to have you, folks. So we didn't do that very good job with that one ago. All right. As I often uh, happens to me, I had something to think about already for you this morning, but God put something different on my heart after I got up. So here we go. Whoever is chosen to take Scotty's place, we need to support that person and give them a chance to be what God wants them to be, not us. Whoever it is, they will not be Scotty. God only made one Scotty. <laughs> We've got to give them a chance to be what God wants them to be. Scotty blessed us for so many years. And, folks, I, he's still going to be around more than we probably think right now. We're thinking, oh, no, we're never going to see Scotty again. No, you are. You are. You're going to hear Scotty more, too. Yeah, that's right. This is church. It'll be different. It will take some adjustment. Whoever it is, they got a tough act to follow, too, don't they? Let's not make it any tougher on whoever that person is, though. Let's act like Christians are supposed to act as whoever it is does whatever God leads them to do. Some of you may not like whoever it is, and if you don't, just give them a chance, and let's not be judging. If we can't say something good, let's don't say it. Satan loves it when we do that anyway, doesn't he? A lot of people didn't like Jesus either, folks. They didn't, like, didn't even want to have anything to do with him. They didn't want to give him a chance. But just look at what he did, too. Maybe God's ready to bless us too, you think? All right, let's, let's do it for that. Just like, just like he did with Scotty. 
right? All right. Bow your heads and I'll lead you in prayer. Thank you, Father, for this church. Thank you for each and every person here today. And be with those who couldn't be here for whatever reason. Thank you for blessing us with Scotty for all these years. Father God, put your loving arms around this church and put a hedge of thorns around it to keep Satan out as we move on into the future, whatever that might be. Father, this church has been had a lot of people come through these doors and at the Livestock Center that might never have entered any other church, and that's a big praise. Help us to continue to be that kind of church. We ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. God bless America. And God bless this church. Scotty, you got it, buddy. I'm not against it. You know, I just want to... This, I had a table set before me here, and it kind of makes me hungry. <laughs> well, good morning. My goodness, another good crowd in here. Uh, crowds have been good all morning. And other, the other two services, we've had uh, really good crowds, and, and I think people are becoming less concerned about the COVID spread and, and coming out, and it's good to see you. We've, we've missed you, and some of you still are at home, uh, and we miss you, and we look forward to the day's Soon that we can sit together and sing together and, and worship the Lord in, in, um, in fellowship. This morning we're continuing a sermon that I've been trying to get preached for, I don't know how long, it's been a long time. Um, it's um, a sermon today that's going to be dealing with the secret acts of believers. We're going to, I started that, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. The secret acts of believers. And we talked about many things that they do in secret, prayer, fasting. Uh, you know, I don't want to rehearse all those again. But today we're going to hit two new areas and two, two new things that believers do in secret. <clears throat> but let me start by saying today that um, I'm really frustrated, and I think a lot of people are, about our, our world and about our nation. Uh, we, for instance, let me just say it like this. If you or me or if I did something that uh, was as blatant and overt as some of our political leaders are doing and have done, you and I would be in jail for the rest of our lives. And uh, it seems like in America today, there is no justice. There is, we've, we've gone past that where uh, we're letting people get by with stuff just because they're famous or because they're rich. And that really frustrates me. And I know it does you justice-loving, freedom-loving people. But, but that's, that's a difficult time. We're also, other things frustrate me. And uh, for nearly a decade now, I've been preaching to you. Actually, I've been preaching to you for 12 or 13 years. But it frustrates me because we're living in the most desperate, dangerous time in the history of the world right now. And I preach sermons uh, where the truth of God, hopefully as best I know how to do it, is delivered to you. I try to stay straight in God's Word, try to interpret it in uh, ways that we all can identify with and understand. But I'm a fr I just worry that it's not getting through. And I'll be honest with you. I start working on the sermon I'm going to preach next on Sunday night. As soon as I get, you know, some, before I go to bed, I'll look and see what it is I'm going to preach on next week. I begin to pray about it overnight, and then the next morning, Monday morning, I'll pick it up and run it a little bit, do some research, whatever. But I have been recently. I've been saying to the Lord, Lord, please don't make me talk about that stuff again that I've been talking about. In other words. The issues that I, and I don't plan, I plan not to. I try every way that I can to go in a new direction. And it seems that invariably in these past years that the Lord had taken me back against my will, back to these same issues that I'm going to have to talk about today again. And I know some of you are weary of hearing about this, and I get it. I really do. 
But this, I'm going to say it like this. If you don't like it, talk to my boss. Okay? Uh, because I, I'm bringing you things I think you need to hear. I know that there are things we need to hear. These are days of trouble. This day that we live in today is the culmination of 6,000 years of human history. We're, in, we're, we're entering into the, nearly the 7,000th year of human history. And in that time, there is an agenda that's been working its way out. It's a playbook. Something has, a goal has been in mind. Something that the enemy has been trying to bring about for all this time. And we are now coming near to the end of this agenda. And the hook is about to be set. We've been fed a line, this fishing metaphor, some of you will get it. We've been fed a line, and we have bitten the worm or whatever, and the hook is about to be set in our world today. And it's dangerous, it scares me, and I have to talk about it. I have to preach about it, because as you know, my tenure here is coming to an end, and, and so I've got to get said what the Lord is wanting me to say to you today. Jesus knew these days were coming. Didn't surprise him. He is God who knew everything he needed to know. And he looked down into the 21st century, and he saw you. He saw me. He saw world events. He saw situations, issues that were coming. He saw the agenda that the fallen were putting into play to bring this world under subjection of the devil to bring about an end of humanity, to bring about an end of, of uh, civil living, of uh, beauty. And he's begun to pull so many strings and bring things together. We're coming near to the end of it. Jesus knew about it, and he talked about it very, very openly and clearly. In Matthew 24, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, he, there was one concept that he talked about more than one time. Of the other concepts, he talked about only one time. Earthquakes, famine, wars, pestilence, those are all one-time things. But what, there was one issue he talked about over and over again, deception. It was deception. He said that the end-time days will be days of deceiving, when you will be deceived. And he said that if, if it were possible, even the very elect, and that's you and I, the believers, would be deceived. So this deception is so good that it will deceive even some of us. So today, with that in mind, I bring you this message, this message that Jesus talked about. This is word, his word. He knows where we're going. He knows the hour we're in, and he brings us this, these thoughts today. Are we tribulation saints? Are we living in those final days? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows for sure. I think we'll not know this until re in re we look back in retrospect. But we very could be in the very end days. Uh, this, these could be the beginning days of tribulation and trouble. He said to us as we faced, come to this time to stand. Ephesians tells us to stand. Put on the whole armor and stand. And trust that the, the Most High God will get us through and take care of us in the midst of it all. Well, there's a problem that's gone on for many, many years in church and other areas. Uh, and the problem is best presented to you in, a, in an illustration. So I'm going to give you a little illustration. It's an illustration I heard a long time ago. And this, it goes like this. When you're in a Bible focused, uh, spirit-filled and led worship service, and the Word of God is preached and expounded, you are given a pearl, a pearl of wisdom, a pearl of whatever, beauty, a pearl. You're giving a pearl. And when we're sitting in, we hear a sermon that comes from God, from the Word of God, through a messenger of God. You take that pearl, and you look at it, that sermon, you look at it. You think, wow, that's beautiful. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. We take our pearls, and, uh, oh, we, we just, you know, we just 
look all over them. We, we think about them while we're sitting in church. Then the sermon's over. We take our pearl, and we hold it in our hand, and we walk out of church, and we get out into the parking lot, and we go, there goes that pearl. I'll get another one next week or whatever. And see, folks, what I'm trying to say here is I've been telling you this stuff for a long time. Is it changing your life? Are you reacting differently to this world? Are you uh, aware any more than ever before of what's going on in the world? And the frustration is not all of us are. Not all of you are. I know many are awake, and many are beginning beginning to understand this. But it is not. We're getting past the point of time when we come to church and we walk out of the car and we say, well, that was a good sermon, or that was a terrible sermon, or the music was awful today, or the music was wonderful today. That's our conversation. And that's not at all the point. You've been given a message from God. What are you going to do about it? That is the frustration that I bring to you this morning. I don't want you just to hear this sermon and judge it. I don't want you to think it's bad or it's good or whatever. I want you to hear from God this morning. Today we're going to look at those secret acts that overflow into our lives and change us. Uh, We're going to see that when we found or build our life upon the Word of God, when we live by His rules, His statutes, when we live by that, we create for our lives a solid foundation, something we can build on. You can build a life on it. You can build a family on it. You can build a church on it. You can build a nation on it. And that's what we're talking about today. That's how this works. So what we're talking about is building that great foundation to let you stand during times of trouble, tribulation. However you want to couch it or say it, this is the time we're we're building that. Tribulation saints act a certain way. There are certain things we do as we move into the tribulation time. So what are they? The first point I want to make today is that Christians, tribulation saints, are totally awake. They are not asleep. They're not, their eyes aren't closed. They're totally awake and aware of what's going on in the world. Now, just before we dig into this, are you awake or are you asleep? I don't mean about the boring sermon. I mean, are you, are you awake spiritually? Uh, What's going on in the world around you? What's going on in your family? What's going on in your nation? Are you awake? Or are you lost in the fishing season that we're in or the turkey season or mushrooming or gardening or cattle raising or whatever? Are you lost in movies and and you're just kind of lost in your own little world? A lot of people are. And, you know, quite honestly, sometimes I wish I could have just stayed there. It's a lot more comfortable. It's a lot safer just to get lost in your world and not really be aware of what's going on in our world. But, but I cannot ever do that anymore because I've been, my eyes have been opened. I've seen, I understand, and I can never go back to the safety of, obscure, of, of, knowing, of, of not being aware of what's going on. So let me read Matthew 6, 22, and then we'll talk about this further. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Let me translate the word healthy for you. It, it comes from a Greek, Greek words, which means generously awake or generously wide open. It's eyes that, and it's not just stingily, not just a little bit of a squinty, but they're wide open. All right, let's go back now. If your eyes are wide open, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are, and that's the opposite now, stingy, closed, squinty, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, what I'm going to say today is going to be a little bit difficult to hear. I'm going to be talking about things today that will shake you, hopefully. Will, uh, hopefully it gets your attention. There, the, because the powers that be, and I don't explain what all that means, but that means the people in power and the beings that are in power of them, that are behind them, 
they want you unaware. The, the, everything they can do to keep you asleep or unaware is better for the agenda they're trying to unfold on the earth. Because if you're awake, you can fight against it. You can resist it. You can refuse to be a part of it if you're awake. But sadly, many of us are not awake. We're not aware of what's going on. And so, therefore, it happens to us, and we're involved in it. It overwhelms us, and we, can't, we don't even know a thing about it. Now, our world today is talking about being woke. You know, that's a big social thing today. Everybody's woke, okay? The news is woke. The, the entertainers are woke. Uh, whatever. Well, I'm not talking about that. Now, let me, let me just say what we're on this subject. There, there are inequities in our world. There have been for a long time. Oh, no question about it. Black lives do matter. Uh, white privilege is, is, is a real issue. I know there are things going on in our world today that are, in a, that are unequal. They don't work out. They're not fair. I get that. I really I don't oppose that at all. But I'm not talking about that particularly today when I say awake or woke. I'm talking about a spiritual issue that's going on Way behind that, uh, behind what's ca- what I'm talking about today, what is causing this to happen. Now, my tenure, of course, is running a little short here. And so I've got to talk about the things that are extremely important to me. Tribulation saints have their eyes open, wide open, not stingy, not squinting at our world, but wide open. They understand. They see what's coming. They, un- they look behind the news uh, accounts. They look behind the issues that are coming to what really is happening. Now, the tribulation church got to be awake. It, it has to be and engaged in the battle. The battle is in the, it a spirit w- war between the Lucifer and the, the things of God. And unless you are aware and awake, you will be caught up in it and used by the enemy. So I want you awake for your sake, for the sake of the world. I, you must come awake. Now, with that said, I'm going to now connect some dots for you. These dots that I'm going to connect seem like there is no connection. They will seem uh, like unique events uh, that just are out there, part of our world. But I'm going to say in advance, every one of these things I'll be talking about today have a common connection. They all connect to the agenda of the fallen. They all connect to America of our founding fathers. We, do, we no longer live in a federated a federal government where, uh, where it used, as we used to be. We've never been a democracy per se, but we are not a, a federated government any longer, a federal government. And if you're, political, if you're a political scientist, you understand the difference. But we're not that. We are now a country that is changing our political views. We're going in a new direction. Whether we like it or not, uh, we're going in a new direction. And uh, this world that we live in now and we will live in in the future is not normal to the past. It is a new normal. And we'll never go back to the government and the kind of world we lived in before. We've passed that. We've passed the Rubicon as, as, it, as, it, as it is. Normal is a setting on your clothes washer. And it's not anything else in this world that's going to be normal again. Now, let me start connecting the disconnected dots. First of all, the Gog and Magog War. Some of you Bible students already know what I'm talking about. There is, a last week, last two weeks, there have been heightened uh, crisis in the Middle East. Israel and Hamas uh, have been... Sending, uh, well, you know, uh, what is, what is, well, bombs, rockets. Uh, had a had a aged aging moment there. Sending rockets back and forth and blowing each other up and killing lots and lots of people. Thank goodness that uh, hostilities have been settled and there's a ceasefire there now. But guys, it won't last. It's not going to last. And that war will heat up again, and the Gog-Magog war, and that's what the Bible calls this war, will continue until, and this is prophecy, it's not not me prophecy, it's Bible prophecy, until Russia, China, Iran, Turkey, and many other Middle Eastern countries all 
gang up on Israel. They're, they're going to do it and, and come and, and fight on them, and fight against them. So that's one thing I want you to hold up here in orbit. Just look at it. The Gog Magog War. All right? Put it up here, and we're going to connect some more dots to it. The second dot I want you to connect is weird and way off, but the earth is entering a period of time when the sun cycles are not producing the sunspots that, uh, that we have been experiencing for the past hundred years. And uh, we are now entering a, into a climate change that's exactly opposite of what the world is telling you. It's not heating up. It's cooling off. And any honest scientist, any honest weather scientist will tell you this. Now, there's, a, there's an agenda driving a, climate, a warming climate. They're wanting to do things, but it's political and it's agenda-driven. But the truth is we're entering a time of cooling. It's called a solar minimum. And it has other, it'll move to even a solar maximum when the, when the planet is going to cool. Uh, our summers are getting cooler. Our springs are getting longer and wetter. Our winters uh, are not necessarily getting that much colder, but there it is. That we are entering a time, and I guess it is a little bit, but this is the wettest, coolest May in history. And that's not a, just a, an odd thing. It, it's simply a part of a larger thing that we're entering a time of planetary cooling. All right? Gog and Magog war. Planetary cooling, how in the world could those two things possibly connect? All right? I told you I don't have time to connect them logically for you. You'll have to do your own research. But they do connect. Let me go further and tell you. Oh, let me say also, because of the cooling of the planet, you're, we're going to see food shortages. And watch it very carefully. Our farmers are being paid not to farm. Our dairy people are being paid not to Dairy, of course, you can't, there's no pay in dairy anyway, right? Some of you guys are. But we're, we're going to enter a time when, of food shortages. Just watch it. You, you know it, ladies. You've been shopping. You know there's not as much stuff at the grocery stores as there used to be. Somebody told me last week, there was one store, I think in Springfield, a big store, there wasn't one dairy product in the whole store. I don't know. I just heard that. You know, okay. Now, to, so get this. Here we go. Gog and Magog War. Russia, Israel, uh, Russia, Israel, China, all that. Number two, sunspot redu reduction, cooling planet. Now, let me add another thing. Every news article, every news, and I watched last week. I just wanted to watch the news to see what was going on. Every one of them talked about UFOs. It's not just the crazies anymore that talk about it. I'm, being, I'm joking here. It's everybody's talking about these UFOs. What are they? Where are they? Where, the big question is, what's going on? Uh, how does this fit into what you're, the, the point I'm trying to make here today? I'm going to tell you that if you are asleep and you're not awake, you're going to say, think these are benign, helpful little green men that have decided to come back here and bless us and take care of us and help us out and solve our problems and whatever, they are not. These are the same critters we met in the sixth chapter of Genesis. What? Okay, I'm, I'm telling you a lot of stuff today, I know. and it's But if you researched all that we're looking at today, it's going to take you a lot of research. Go back and read Genesis chapter 6. This is the same critters that, that are coming back to the earth today. They, they've had 6,000 years to to become hybridized with humanity. Okay, I'm weird, aren't I? Have I gone crazy? They've had 6,000 years to change their appearance and their look, but they're the same thing. And they have an agenda. They're part of a bigger agenda, as are sunspots, as are the war in the Middle East. It all fits together. Number four. The next thing is that Satan and his secret society pals are trying to depopulate the planet. They don't want so many of us here. Now, you may just be waking up to this, but if you are, uh, wow, you need to wake up. There is a depopulation move to reduce the number of people on the planet. 
Have you not listened to Bill Gates talk at all? Have you not listened to the United Nations uh, projections? Where, I mean, have you been asleep? There is a huge movement worldwide to depopulate the planet. Birth rates are declining. Sperm counts are declining. Uh, the the baby, Fewer babies are being born. Uh, I don't need to spell this all out for you, but we're being depopulated. And the reason is because the fallen want this planet for themselves. They don't want us here in their way. There's a huge agenda happening today. Biological attacks, food shortages, economic crashes, and any other thing they can think of. Let me read you now the same thing I read out of Matthew, sorry, yeah, out of the Sermon on the Mount. But I want to read it out of the book, called, uh, an interpreter, interpretation called The Message. Some of you may have read The Message. Let me read you this. Your eyes are windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is a musty cellar. If you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you will have. And so many of us in our world today have chosen to live in the musty cellar and keep our blinds closed because it's just more comfortable. Who wants to know all this stuff when we could just go fishing or watch a movie or watch a ball game? Who wants to know all this stuff and worry about this when we could do it? See, but do you want to live in a, awake in the world or do you want to sleep through it? We're in a war. We are literally in a war between good and evil. And we are living on the battlefield. And if you are not awake, you're probably going to be a part of the, the war on the bad side. Now, let me talk about one more thing because my time has run out. <clears throat> there is another thing that is very clearly, that clearly defines a tribulation saint. And that is this one thought. They have a clear identity. They know who they are or know what they're not, and they know who they serve. They're not confused about it. Some that will be listening to this sermon today are sort of confused. They don't know who they serve. Do they serve God, the Creator God, or do they serve another God, or do they serve themselves or whatever? There's confusion. Listen to verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money or mammon or the God of this world. You can't serve both at the same time. Now, the best trick Satan has ever pulled on the human race is to convince us he doesn't exist, that he's not real. And remember, I don't know, you've probably heard me say this. I wish the devil was forced to wear a red suit and carry a pitchfork so we could always identify him. But he doesn't. And he's convinced many people that he doesn't exist. And when you're convinced, then he can do anything he wants to to you, and you won't understand it. We're told in the New Testament, he even disguises himself as an angel of light to fool us, deception. You can't serve both gods. When you love one, you can't love the other. When you love one, you can't love the other. No matter which, it eliminates the ability for you to love both. Now, so the question that has to be answered today is, which God do you serve? Which God do you love? Because you can't love them both. Because they're all, because what I'm trying to say is you can't do both. If you are asleep, we talked about that, then you don't, you're not aware that all this stuff connects. Signs in the sky, earthquakes. I don't want to go back into it. But you also must be awake because, now here's where the sermon goes to the cross. I try to take every sermon to the cross. Here's where we go. This is the gospel. If you come to Christ, even in this time of tribulation, you can live carelessly in the care of God. You can put your life in His hands, and He will protect you. He will guard you. He will guide you. No matter if the Gog Magog war heats up, no matter if aliens land on the White House lawn, no matter if the earth cools off and we can't get food, no matter what, you can live carelessly in the care of God if 
you will trust him. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat, what you drink, about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. What's worry? What is worry? Well, it's another whole sermon, but, but a shortening version of it would be to be distracted, distressed, or stressed over something that you can't really do anything about anyway. But I think the biggest concern about worry is it distracts you. It gets your mind off of what you're supposed to be thinking about and looking to. That's my biggest concern. Uh, and you know a bird, bird doesn't have a job description, does he? <laughs> he gets to just do whatever he wants to do. Oh, there's a worm over there, I think. See, and when you're in the hand of God, your job description is so much simpler. I've tried to explain this all the time. Love God, love your neighbor. You see, don't worry. Don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Love the Lord. Don't be distracted. Because those that are distracted by, that are not distracted by lies know the truth. And you are, listen now, you are in bondage if you believe a lie. It grabs you. It will hold you. It will keep you from what you want for your life if you believe lies or if you stay asleep. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Now, I'm going to close this sermon today, and I know you're excited about that. I'm going to close this sermon today by reading uh, the verses that lead up to and then read my life text. This is my life verse. This is a verse that I, that I quote to myself every day, and I have for, well, as long as, as long as I've been a believer. This is my life verse, and I want you to listen to it because I think it will help you. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these birds. That is how God clothes the grass of the field, which are here today and tomorrow is thrown into fire. Will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans, and that's not you, run after these things. And your heavenly Father, get, listen now, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. It's not shocking to God. He knows. Okay. Now, keep reading, because this is my verse. But seek his kingdom and his righteousness. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. So then, if the Gog Magog war heats up, as again, as I said, if the aliens... Come and reveal themselves and tell us all kinds of lies, and they will, by the way. And no matter what, you've identified with Christ. You're sure you know who you are. You know who your identity is invested in, and you know where you're going and who's going to take care of you. Don't borrow tomorrow's troubles. Just enjoy the life God has given you today. And seek his kingdom first. Put it first, and you get all the other stuff as well. It all comes. If you put him first. Well, whose God do you serve? Something to think about today. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you that you wouldn't let me talk you out of preaching this sermon. I pray, Lord, that whatever you want preached, I'll preach it, despite the fact that I like it or not. And I pray, Lord, that the people that you Will, that you have in place to hear it, will let it sink into their heart and not throw the pearl in the parking lot, but take it home with them and bury it deep in their psyche and let, it, let its roots go all the way down into our character and our will and produce the fruit of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit, so that we, Lord, as a group, can live and rest carelessly in the care of God. We love you. We trust you. We want nothing more than your control of our life and your love. In Jesus we pray. Amen.
If you guys want to turn to page two, was it going to close with Amazing Grace? Key of G, I guess, David. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. close us in prayer, David. Father, what a wonderful day that you've given us. What a wonderful opportunity to come together and hear your word spoken. It's like a banquet that's laid before us, and we're really thankful for the actual banquets that are laid before us. We're thankful for the circle of sisters and what they do and how they provide wonderful things for us, but we need to be thankful as well for the spiritual spiritual food that we received. Like manna from heaven, we get this every week, every week, multiple times a week. And we just pray that we will value it more and we will be thankful for it even more in the future than we are in the past. We pray that you be with each and every one who is serving this country, serving it in spirit and in truth. Uh, those who, whose job it is to be in charge of the political arena and the medical arena and the soldiers that you've given us and all of those who are watching over us in a special way, the leaders of this congregation, the preacher that we have, whoever that may be, we just pray that you'd be with each and every one of us and we have different reasons to be thankful. We have different reasons to have needs. And we pray that you would be with us in all of these. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.